Hello everyone, this is Pat Nat coming to you with a new video. Today it's actually an interview with Enfreak. Now I've been subscribed to Enfreak ever since I saw his Metroid Other M review, which was actually really, really good review. And when I thought of doing interviews, he was actually one of the first people I thought of to ask. But uh, today's interview is going to be a little bit different. While we usually just, um, well not we, but while I usually just send the interviewee the pre-written questions and then they record their live recorded answers or whatever... Uh, today, I'm just going to actually record myself asking the questions, even though the interview is not live. But I thought, you know what, whatever, let's just do it. So uh, anyway, I won't waste any more time. Let's uh, let's get on to the first question. So the first question I asked him is, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, man, first of all, I'd like to say, like, thanks for having me on for the interview. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, I'm Naveed. Uh, that's my name. And my YouTube channel is named Nfreak. Uh, I make a lot of different reviews and stuff like that. I used to focus more on just Nintendo, but I'm trying to branch out a little bit now, and yeah, I make a lot of reviews and stuff. Why don't you explain why your channel name is Enfreak? <laughs> so, I, I made my channel a long time ago, and back then I was a huge Nintendo fan, and I mean, I still am, but I branched out a little more, like I said, um, but... Back then, my YouTube channel name, I wanted it to be Nintendo Freak, like just Nintendo Freak, but that wasn't available at the time. Someone had already taken it, and apparently there were a lot of other people who had taken the name Nintendo Freak, so uh, I actually used the name Nintendo Freak 888 for the longest time before YouTube allowed you to change your name, and then like once I decided to you know, actually try to make better videos and stuff like that, I decided to change my name to just Nfreak, because... I didn't want to be solely focused on Nintendo stuff. Like that's that's still kind of what I do the most, Nintendo. But I don't want to be known as just the guy that does Nintendo stuff. So I changed my name and kind of made my branding and all that around that. So that's that's where that's where Enfreak came from. How long ago did you create your channel? I made my channel. Uh, I think it was I think it was way back in 2007. Um, that's when it was a Nintendo Freak 888. I but back then I used to do like weird videos with my friend uh it was like off of the screen I, di I didn't capture any videos like record with a camera off the TV screen and we would not have any script or anything like that it would just be us talking about the game for like 10 minutes or so <laughs> and we just go through the games like like beginning and then play a little bit of it just so people would get an idea what the game was about but yeah Way back then, and I I had a daily motion channel for a while because YouTube had like a size limit, like a nine minute limit on their videos, while daily motion had like fifteen minutes. So back then it was it was a very different time back in two thousand eleven or two thousand seven. When your channel first started, you made many video game system reviews and unboxings. Do you plan on doing more of those in the future? No, I I don't really I don't really plan on making any more unboxings or anything like that. Uh, that was before I really had like an idea of what my channel, what I wanted my channel to be. Uh, right now, I'm more focused on a more quality content, like very highly edited, scripted content. Um, when I was doing my unboxings, it was kind of like I didn't really, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I was just doing a bunch of different types of videos, and I mean, <laughs> those videos for some reason get a lot of views. I don't, I don't know why people watch unboxings, but, but they do, and so I mean they're popular, but. I don't want to go back to doing those. They're very, very simple videos. They're not the types of videos I want to make anymore. And as far as like video game system reviews, maybe, maybe sometime in the future, I'll do like a scripted, a scripted review of a video game system. But uh, as it is right now, I'm just more focusing on just the games. Which video of yours did you enjoy making the most? Oh, that's a, that's a tough one. I, a lot of my more recent one, recent videos I've, I've really enjoyed making because. Just the process of going through making a video is is definitely definitely fun. I think I like I really like editing. Um, I I don't know. I I maybe have to say my wonderful one on one video. Uh, I 
I really liked that game and I really enjoyed going through that game and uh, there was a bunch of different editing tricks and stuff that I did in that video um, that was really fun to do. Um, it's hard to say what I, what I enjoy making the most, but if I had to pick one, I'd, I'd probably choose that one. Which video of yours took the most effort to make? This one I don't think is as hard to answer. Um, my top 10 atmospheric videos probably took the most effort to make. It was it was really my first try at making a top 10 video. I had made one before, but it was not very good. It was like all trailers and stuff like that, so it wasn't too difficult. But with a with an actual top 10 that you make yourself, like first of all, it it could get kind of long. I I kind of kept I try to keep my top 10 short, but you have to record every single game that you're going to make a video like you're going to have a spot on. So you have to go through every game, capture footage, you know, grab that footage, bring it into your editing system and edit that all out. So it takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of time. Um, regular reviews don't take as much time because you only need to record really one game. You might need to record more of that game, but you only need to record one. So definitely I think the top 10 uh, was the hardest or took the most effort. And yeah, that, that, that took a while. What is your least favorite game? Oh, this is... <laughs> This is a tough one. Uh, I don't, I don't generally like to buy games or play games that I know I won't enjoy. I usually get games that I I know I will enjoy. Um, honestly, I don't know what my least favorite game is. Uh, I've played bad games. I've definitely played some bad games, but I I don't know if there's any that I've like generally just hated. I can tell you what my least favorite genre is, which. I really am not a big fan of RTS games or MMO. Um, that that doesn't say that they're bad games. It's just I they're they're not my thing. Um, but honestly, I can't I couldn't tell you what my least favorite game is. Do you plan on having another month of Metroid? Do I plan on having another month of Metroid? Um, probably not. I probably won't be having a month of anything uh, anymore. When I made that Metroid, when I when I had that idea to make that month of Metroid, I I kind of came up with it on the fly. It was not planned out, and for for stuff like that, you really really need to plan out in advance what you want to do. And obviously, my month of Metroid actually took me like three and a half months to do. Uh, I've had a problem with that as far as like putting videos out at a consistent basis basis uh, for my entire YouTube career, if you want to call it that. But uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm going to have another month of Metroid. I'm, I'm definitely going to make more videos on Metroid, but I'm not going to like call it a month of Metroid or anything like that. What is your favorite Metroid title? This, uh, this is easy. I, I've said it before, and I've said it in actually the video that I made of the, of the game, but Metroid Prime, definitely my favorite Metroid game. Uh, it was I had played previous Metroid titles before that, but when I saw Metroid Prime, I was super excited and when I played it, it did not disappoint at all. It's it's just got that atmosphere. It's got everything I love about video games, exploration. You know, it's 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 so good. It's it's my favorite Metro game and it's and it's my favorite game of all time. In five years, do you see your channel becoming a serious occupation or remaining as a hobby or just dying off? Um, I I'd really it'd be really cool if uh my YouTube channel could become a long-term thing an occupation but this see realistically I don't expect that like I'm not doing this as a job I'm doing this just for fun really right now um, in the future if I if I've really got nothing else to do if I don't have a job or anything like that and I really work hard at it that's I might I might try to like really work hard and get get my YouTube channel up but no I, I mean right now I'm not I'm not focusing on that I'm, I'm still in college I'm almost done but I'm focusing on my school and really my youtube channel comes second which is which kind of sucks cuz that's that's why that's why i don't get videos out very often and i really want to get more videos out but it, it's just really hard to with school and everything um but as far as like dying off i think i think i'm going to keep my channel around for a while i don't i don't think it's going to die off i think i'm going to at least have videos coming out uh, like at, at least a few times a year um I definitely don't want my channel to die out. This is video making is something I really enjoy doing, and I honestly wouldn't want to stop anytime soon. 
There are many video game reviewers out there. What would you say is unique to your channel and your channel alone? <laughs> Uh, to be quite honest, I don't think my channel offers anything radically different from everything else you can find out there. I think, I mean, I do a lot more, I do analytical stuff kind of more. Um, I try not to do too much comedy in general, but YouTube, you know, everything has been done on YouTube. There's so much different types of content out there. I'm doing like my own type of review, um, top tens and like different type of analytical videos, but there's other people out there that do that too. So I mean, the u unique thing about my videos is that it's from my perspective. Um, obviously, nobody else has my specific perspective on a game. So people will watch for what I think, and hopefully they'll get something out of it. Um, but in terms of, like, extremely unique content, uh, it's it's really hard to find find new stuff to do on YouTube nowadays. Uh, I just try to I just try to make my stuff as quality as I can. What video of yours would you recommend to people who haven't seen your videos before? I'd, I'd probably recommend uh, one of my newer videos, either uh, Sunset Overdrive and Traversal, or like my top 10 uh, most atmospheric games. Those two, or maybe like my wonderful 101 video, as I mentioned earlier in this in this interview. Um, I I really like those videos. I think they're they're definitely good stuff. And if if I had to if I had to show somebody a video, it'd be those. Well, everyone, why don't you help and freak out by clicking that video on the screen and maybe leaving a like, and if you did actually like it, then maybe subscribing to see more cool content from Nfreak. On that note, is there anything you would like to add? Yeah, man, I mean, I'd just like to say uh, thanks for thanks for having me on the interview. It was, it was really cool, uh, a, lot of, a lot of interesting questions, and yeah, I really appreciate it, man. Thanks. No thanks necessary, man. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you for your cooperation. Do you want an interview? Then make sure you click that link in the description that says, Do you want an interview? So you can fill out that Google form and I can get to you all in an organized fashion. So long. You know what? I don't care. Muramasa definitely isn't the first game people think of when discussing atmospheric games, but with its unbelievable backdrops and art, I just had to put it on here. The barley flowing in the wind, the waves crashing into the beach, the cherry blossoms being blown off the trees. Everything in the game just has that Japanese flair and makes you.